this section, we're going to talk about the translations theorem. The first translation theorem, so let's actually label that. The first translation theorem, it says the following. It says that if L of F of T is equal to big F of S, nothing new there, then the Laplace transformation of not F of T, but E raised to the AT times F of T. This is not F of S, but rather F of S minus A. Now, what you need to know is, is that if F of S is, I don't know, S squared plus 3S minus 4, over 2s, well then f of s minus a. Well, instead of s, we put s minus a. Instead of s, we put s minus a in brackets. So we're going to get s, this is how I write s, s squared plus 3s minus 4 over 2 times s just function evaluation. So if we know what f of s is, then we can find out what f of s minus a is. So let's try to do such a problem using this thing. Suppose you want to know the following. What is L of e to the 5t times t to the 4? So basically, that's L, that's the open bracket, that's e, a is 5, t is t, and f of t is t to the 4th, and there's a closed bracket. So we know what f of t is, that's important. We know what f of t is. So, what is L of f of t? Because whatever that is, that's f of s. And once we know f of s, we can find f of s minus a. So, it's L of t to the fourth. But we know what that is. Remember that L of t to the n is n factorial divided by s to the n plus 1. n is 4. So you're going to have 4 factorial over s to the 5. That's what f of s is. Now remember, L of e to the 5t times t to the 4th, as long as we agree that's f of t, we know that this is f of s minus a. And this is a, e to the a t. So, if that's f for s, well, instead of s, we put s minus 5. There's your answer. It's called the translation formula because we're shifting things a unit to the right if a is positive that is. Okay, try the next one. Suppose you're asked to find what L of e to the negative 3t times cosine of 5t equals. Remember that L of E to their AT 
time f of t is nothing more than f for the minus a. If f of little f for t is equal to big f for this, then that. That's the theorem. So here is my e to the a t. A is negative 3. And this is f of t. So I want to find, you know, if I know if I know what f of s is, then I replace s with I replace s with s minus a, or in our case s minus negative three. That is s plus three. So I really want to know what f of s is. That means I want to know what the Laplace transform of f of t is. So what's the Laplace transform of cosine of 5t? Well, I know in the bottom it's going to be s squared plus k squared. And since this starts with an S, a c, I put an s on the top. So now, kind of ready to answer this problem. See, this is f for that s. So I want f of s minus negative 3. It is wherever I see s, I put s plus 3, like here and here. So I get s plus 3 over s plus 3 squared plus 25. You don't need this. We're just asking what this equals, and there's the answer. That's what that equals. If you were asked what L inverse of say 2s plus 5 divided by s minus 3 squared, what does this equal? Well, I like all s's to really be s minus 3. Well, what's good is the bottom is that. The bottom is s minus 3 squared. Now, for the top, I have the 2, that 2, but s just got to be s minus 3. So, I have my 2s, which is good. I have my 2s, but then I'm taking away 6. Well, I really want to be adding 5. Well, if you take away 6 and then you add 11, you're really adding 5. Because this is the same as 11 minus 6, and we know that's 5. So I add 11. So I add 11. So... If I do the long division, this becomes the L inverse of this over that, which is 2 over S minus 3 squared plus 11 over S minus 3 squared. The Laplace inverse of that. I can take the Laplace inverse of the sum separately. Okay. Now what we do is this. What if you just had the Laplace of 2 over s squared? Okay. If you just had that, well, you can factor out the 2, because remember, and then we have a 1, 1 over s squared. But this is, we know that L of t to the n is n factorial over s to the n plus 1. 
That means if I interchange these, the Laplace inverse of n factorial over s to the n plus 1, that is equal to, two to the t to the n. Well, here, the power in the bottom is 2. That means n is 1. So, the Laplace inverse of 1 factorial, which is 1, over s to the 1 plus 1, that equals t to the 1. So, this is 2t. And we'll remember that for a moment. Okay, now, of course, I have a silly typo. When you do this division, you just have s minus 3 in the bottom. You just have s minus 3 in the bottom. So, we'll think of just, instead of 2 over s minus 3, we just think of 2 over s. You can factor out the 2, and you get 1 over s. And this is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Okay. Now let's do this Laplace. So you have L inverse of, I'm just going to say 1 over S minus 3 squared, or just 1 over S squared. That is, I'm factoring the 11 right out. But that's, this is just T to the 1. We just talked about that one t to the 1. So we kind of have the answer. It's going to be this plus that. But wait a minute. That was only if that said s and that said s squared. But it says s minus 3. So all you have to do is ask yourself what makes that 0. Or to be exact, just ask yourself what that says. It says minus 3. So it's e to the minus 3t. e to the minus 3t. And there's your answer. Inverses aren't bad. What if you wanted to find the Laplace inverse of 1 over s minus 1 to the 4th. Well, just think the Laplace inverse of 1 over s to the 4th. Now, you'd really like to have 3 factorial on the top, which is 6. 3 factorial is 6. So you can bring out a 1 6. So you have 1 6, the Laplace transformation of 3 factorial over s to the 4th, but that's t cubed. That is, you get t cubed over 6. So, we're also going to get t cubed over 6. That's not going to change. But what is going to change is, that's how I this is 0 when s is 1. So we multiply by e to the 1t. So that means on that last page we did have a little error. This should be 3t. This should be e to the 3t. Okay, let's try another one. Suppose you have L inverse of 1 over S squared plus 2S plus 5. You want to complete the square. Now you have S squared plus 2S plus 5. Plus 5, you really don't want it to be there, but it is the way it is. You have s squared plus 2s plus 5. So the two sides are equal. But now you want to add half of that number squared. Half of 2 
when you square it you get one and then you square that that's what you want to add to the s squared plus 2s plus 1 but if you add 1 to the right side of that equal sign it no longer equals this okay we'll take away 1 so what we have is the equal here what's in this bracket by design is a perfect square it's s followed by half of that number which is positive 1 squared if you foil out s plus 1 squared you will get this don't forget to add the 4 so it's s plus 1 squared plus 4 remember 4 is 2 squared Let's even write it that way. 2 squared. Now, I can put a 2 on the top as long as I bring out a half. So, the Laplace transformation, inverse transformation of 1 half of 2 over s squared plus 2 squared, 1 half times this. Since that's not s on the top, I remember to use the trig function that starts with s. It's sine of k, which is 2, t. So this answer on top is going to be 1 half the sine of 2t. But that's only if this s in the bottom is s plus 1. So now you multiply it by e to the negative t. Because when s plus 1 is 0, s is negative 1. Or if you prefer, s plus 1 is s minus negative 1. And that's the power, negative 1 times t. So there's the answer. Calculus part, or if you prefer, the differential equation part wasn't that bad. Let's look at another one. Suppose you have L inverse of 2s plus 5 over s squared plus 6s plus 34. Well, s squared plus 6s plus 34 is certainly equal to itself plus 0. That is, I want to add something here. I'm going to add half of that number squared. A half for 6, positive 3. And when you square it, you get 9. So it's plus 9. So now I have to take away 9. Now, this mess in here is now a perfect square. It's s followed by half of that number. Half of that number is positive 3. If that would have been minus 6, half of negative 6 would have been negative 3. And then I would write s minus 3. But it wasn't that. S minus 3 squared. That's all of this. Plus 25. Positive 34 minus 9, 25. So in the bottom, I'm definitely going to have S plus 3 squared plus 25. And the top, I don't want S's. I want S plus 3's. Well, since I need 2S, I'm going to do 2 times S plus 3. Well, there's my 2S. Oh, plus 6. I only want to add 5. All right, I'll take away 1. I'll take away 1. It's not that bad. So this is going to equal to the inverse Laplace transformation of this fraction. And I can even factor out the 2. And one of the s plus 3's will cancel. Minus the Laplace inverse of 
one over one. Oh, of course, that's not right at all. So, let's see what we would get if we didn't have this translation. What if we had L inverse of 2s minus 1 over s squared plus 25? Suppose we have that, which becomes this over the bottom, L inverse of 2s, I can factor out the 2, over s squared plus 5 squared minus 1 over this bottom minus I factor out the minus the Laplace inverse of 1 over s squared plus 5 squared so this first one is 2 times that Laplace now since this is s on the top I'm going to write cosine of 5t minus t minus y. Since this is not s on the top, I want k. So I can put a 5. 1 times 5 is just 5. But then I have to bring out the 1 fifth. There's the 1 fifth I brought out. Now this inverse is straightforward. Since that is not an s on the top, it's a 5, I'm going to put the s function. It's the sine of k, which is 5t. So there's the answer to this one. The answer to the one on the top is nothing harder. Now, rather than multiplying each term by the e to the power, I can factor out the e to the power. It's e to the negative 3t. Okay, let's try some more. But so far, we ha in this section, we haven't solved any differential equations. Well, that's going to end right now. Suppose you have y prime plus 4y is e to the negative 4t, and y of 0 is t. I'm going to take the Laplace transform of each side. The Laplace of y prime plus 4y is equal to the Laplace of e to the negative 4t. So you take the Laplace of y prime, which is s times the Laplace of y, plus, sorry, we're still with this one, minus y of 0. Now, the plus, and then we take the Laplace of 4y, which is 4 times the Laplace of y. And this is equal to the Laplace of e to the negative 4t. On the left side, we have sl of y plus 4 more. We have s plus 4 l of y minus y of 0, which is 2. And this is equal to the Laplace of the right side. Now, just keep in mind, whether you're right or not, this is the Laplace of 1 times e to the negative 4t. But we have this theorem that eats right through this. We have the translation theorem. It says that L of e to the negative t times f of t is equal to f of s minus a. And that's a. The a is negative 4. Well, you 
and f of t is just 1. If we take the Laplace of 1, not only do we get f1 over s, but we get f of s. So, I plug in, because I want this answer, I have 1 over s minus a. Instead of 1 over that, I get 1 over that. But a is minus 4. s minus a negative 4 is s plus 4. So I get this. And now I want to solve for L of y. I want to solve for L of y. So first I add 2 to both sides. And of course I'll add the 2 this way. 2 times s plus 4 over s plus 4. And that is 1, so it's allowed. And why am I doing it? So now the bottoms are the same. So that's L of that's s plus 4 L of y. In fact, I'm not even going to do that. Now, I'm going to divide by L plus 4. I'm going to divide the first fraction by L plus 4, s plus 4. I get 1 over s plus 4 squared. When I divide the second fraction by s plus 4, I get that. So just recopying this, I have L of y is 1 over s plus 4 quantity squared plus 2 over s plus 4. Now, I could interchange this argument with that argument, and then I get L of 1 over s plus 4 squared plus 2 over s plus 4 equals y. Let me put the y first. But I really have to write inverse. So that's what y equals. Okay. So what you can do at this point, so this is equal to L inverse of 1 over S plus 4 squared plus L inverse of 2 over S plus 4. And in fact, that 2 can come out in front. So let's remove the shift. Let's remove the translation. You had L inverse of just 1 over S s squared plus 2 times L inverse of 1 over S, S, just 1 over S. This one is straightforward. This will be a T plus 2 times, oops, plus 2 times this, which is 1, because L of 1 is 1 over s. So L inverse of that will give you 1. And 2 times 1 is just 2. So we have t plus 2. We have t plus 2. So now we need to go back and we need to talk about, oops, we need to talk about what this is going to equal. It's going to be something like t plus 2. It's going to be t plus 2. But then you have to multiply by e to the negative 4t. Because what makes that 0? What makes that 0? is negative 4. So this is what I claim y equals. Now, we have to be a little bit careful. We might be off by a constant. Now, if I plug in 0, we're supposed to get 2. Well, 0 plus 2 is 2. And negative, so this is 2 times e to the 0. But e to the 0 is 1. 
and 2 times 1 is 2. So I'm getting the right answer. If I only got 1 here, if when I plugged in 2 I got 1, well then I'd add 1 at the end. But that was not necessary. So that is what y equals. This problem, I'm even going to check it. Remember, it has to satisfy this equation. So, I know what y equals. It's t plus 2 times e to the negative 4t. What's y prime? You can take the derivative of the first term, which is 1, the first factor is 1, times the second factor. Plus the first factor, t plus 2, times the derivative of the second, which is e to the negative 4t times negative 4. So I can bring out a negative. Okay, cleaning this up, we have, well, we, there's an understood 1 in front. I can factor out e to the 4t, so I have 1 minus 4 times t plus 2. We have negative 4t, negative 8, but don't forget to add the 1, so it's negative 7. That is what y prime equals. Now, I'm supposed to add 4 y's, alright? Well, this is y. So, 4 y would be I can multiply that factor by 4 and I get 4t plus 8 times e to the negative 4t. So 4y is e to the negative 4t times 4t plus 8. And I'm supposed to add them. On the left side, I get y prime plus 4y. On the right side, when I add those two, I have a common factor, e to the negative 4t. So I'm going to get this quantity plus that quantity. Negative 4t minus 7 plus 4t plus 8. So I have the e to the negative 4t in front. You have negative 4t and you add 4t, that's 0. And I am adding. We have negative 7 and you add 8, you get 1. So I get e to the negative 4t. So y prime plus 4y should equal negative 4t. Oh yeah, it did check. So that problem is done. Try another one. Suppose you have that y prime minus y is 1 plus t e to the t. That's like a minus two. Suppose you have this, and y is zero is zero. So we're going to take the Laplace of both sides. So I take the Laplace of the left side, and and not inverse, but the Laplace of the right side. The Laplace of y prime is s Laplace of y. Minus y is 0, which is 0, so I don't have to say that. Minus L of y. So we have s minus 1, L of y. There's an understood 1 there. And this is equal to the Laplace of the right side. L of 1 plus L of t, e to the t. Okay, so what you have to constantly remember is the first translation theorem. It says, I tend not to write this off, but if L of f of t is equal to f of s, then L of e to the a t times f of t is f of s minus a. So, it pays to know 
what f of s is? Well, it's L of f of t, but that's f of t. L of t to the 1 is 1 factorial over s to the 1 plus 1. It's 1 over s squared. So f of s is 1 over s squared. So f of s minus a and a is e to the a t, e to the 1 t. So it's going to become 1 over, instead of s, I put s minus 1 in brackets. Okay, so L of 1 is 1 over s, plus L of this mess is 1 over s minus 1 squared. And this is what s minus 1 L of y equals. So dividing by s minus 1, I get 1 over s times s minus 1 plus 1 over s minus 1 cubed. So interchanging this with that and replacing l with l inverse, I get Laplace inverse transform of what I'm writing. is equal to y. So now we know what y equals. We just have to do this Laplace inverse transform and we'll be okay. I'm going to write it on top. y is equal to Laplace inverse of this plus 1 over s minus 1 cubed. The best way of finding the inverse Laplace of that first fraction is by partial fraction. I want to write 1 over s times s minus 1 as a over s plus b over s minus 1. The reason I put a and b and you know just constants is because the bottoms, the degrees are 1. So, to write this fraction with the common denominator, I have to multiply the a by s minus 1. In fact, top and bottom gets multiplied by s minus 1. And for the b, top and bottom get multiplied by s. So, what I have is as plus bs. So, I have a plus b s is minus a. And this numerator, since both fractions have the same denominators, this numerator, which I wrote down there, should equal 1. That is 0 s is plus 1. So this is 0 and that's 1. If negative a is 1, then a is negative 1. And if you add b to it and you get 0, if you add b to a and you get 0, b must be 1. Okay, so let me get rid of the multiplication by 1s. And a becomes negative 1 and b becomes plus 1. Okay, so now the Laplace inverse of this function is the Laplace inverse of that function. That is the Laplace inverse of negative 1 over s plus the Laplace inverse of 1 over s minus a. And you not lose that little minus sign. That minus sign. The Laplace inverse of 1 over s is 1. There's that little minus sign. There's the 1. Plus. Now, what does this equal? Well, 
we know the Laplace inverse of 1 over s is just 1. So it's going to be 1 times e to the 1t. e to the 1t. e to the 1t. And remember, y was equal to this. Now, let me just come down here and get rid of this. We just wrote down what the Laplace inverse of that was. It's this. It's negative 1 plus 1e e to the t. Or just plus e to the t. Now we need to find the Laplace inverse of that and add that on. Well, the Laplace inverse of 1 over s cubed. I ignore the phase shift. I ignore the translation. Well, since this is 3 in the bottom, I'd like 2 factorial on top. The 2 factorial is 2, so I have to bring out a half. There's the half, and now this is just t to the n. This is a half t, plus a half t. Oh, it was a translation. So it's e to the 1t. What makes that 0 is when s is 1. So there is your answer. And, of course, this does say one-half t to the second, so let me put that up. Now, that's the correct answer up to adding the right constant. We know that y of t is negative 1 plus e to the t plus one-half t squared plus e to the t plus some number. Well, y is 0, well, this piece will be negative 1 if t is 0, plus if t is 0, that will be 1, plus if t is 0, that will be 0, so far it adds up to 0, plus e to the 0 is 1, plus some unknown. So right now, negative 1 plus 1 is 0, plus 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1, plus the box. Oh, it, 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 excuse me. Like I wrote here, 1 half t squared times e to the t. There should be no plus there. Sloppiness. 1 half t squared e to the t. That's negative 1 when t is 0. That's positive 1 plus a half times 0 squared is 0. Times 1 is still 0 plus the unknown. Since this adds up to 0 and we're adding 0, we get 0 plus an unknown. And we want that to be zero, well then the unknown should be zero. That is, that's the answer where that's zero. But there's no need to add zero. So there's the answer. Y is equal to negative one plus e to the t plus one half t squared times e to the t. The next set of problems, I really like it. It talks about something that seems to be interesting, seems to be fun. You have this function called u of t minus a. And either it's 0 or it's 1. And in computer science, 0 means off, 1 means on. It equals 0 in case that value is less is less t is less than a t 
t is less than or is less than a, but positive or zero. T is between zero and a. It can equal zero. And you get one just in case t is a or bigger. Okay. So now, what if I were to multiply? So if we were to graph this, for example, and here is a, well, when you'd be t, t, and this is the u, if t is between 0 and a, you're always 0. You can be 0 at 0, but you can be at a. Now, if t is bigger than a, it's always 1. And it can actually equal a. So there it is. It's a step function. Now, what if I take any arbitrary function, f or t, and I multiply it by u of t minus a? Well, if t is in between 0 and a, this will always be 0 by definition. So I get f of t times 0, which is f of t. Now, if t is bigger than or equal to a, well, that's not 0. It's 1. And f of t times 1 is f of t. Now, I'm not sure why I have f of t above, because if t is less than a, if t is less than a, this part is 0. And f of t, I hope I just wrote it wrong, f of t times 0 is 0. Now, what would this function look like? Well, it's only defined from 0 and above. Now, if this happens to be f of t, and this is t, and this is f, and here's a. a is right there. That's f of a. Well, if you want to draw this function, up to a, you're going to get 0. But then you get the rest of the function. It turns off everything less than a. This gets removed, and it goes down there. That's what it does. That's what multiplying by u does. I think that's really cool. Now, just for the record, since we get f of t, if t is a or bigger, this gets filled in there. t u. Now, this actually has something to do with differential equations. We have this second translation theorem. And this theorem has to do with this step function. The theorem goes on to say if f of s is L of F of T. And A is bigger than 0. Then, L of F of T minus A times U of T minus A is going to be F of S. going to be L of this 
times e to the negative as. e to the negative as. Right now, an interesting one is what if we let f of t equal a constant one? Well, f of anything is one, so f of t minus a is one. Okay, now l of f for t is L of 1, which is 1 over S, which is F of S. Okay, so now we have L of this, which is 1. That's 1 times that. Well, 1 times that is just that. It's U of T minus A. This is E to the negative AS times this. But I just calculated that. It's 1 over s. So here's a consequence, an immediate consequence of that theorem on top. So if somebody asks you what is L of U of T minus 5, this should be easy u bracket t minus a is 5 bracket bracket a is 5 so the e to the negative 5s over s and if the 5 were 51 it'd be negative 51s to the power very straightforward solution Now, remember, okay, we just keep generating and generating more equations. F of L of F for T minus A times U of T minus A. This is E to the negative AS times F for this. So if L of this is equal to that, we can interchange the this into that. That is L inverse of that. That is L inverse of what I'm writing is equal to F of T minus A U times or U of excuse me T minus A. So now if we ever want to take L of something that looks like that, we can immediately write down the answer. And this here, f of s, is L of f of t. So if we know f of t, we plug in t minus a for t. And we're given what a is, we just plug a in there. It is this piece, this piece doesn't really change except where except for you plug in the value of a. f of something always can be changing. Different for each problem. Okay. So remember that L inverse of e to the negative a s f of s is equal to f of t minus a times u of t minus a. So what if you were being asked to find L inverse of e to the negative 3s times 1 over s minus 9? A is 3, and F of S is that. So, I definitely know what that is. It's U of 
t minus a. a is 3. I just need to find out what that is. Well, I know right now that f of s, which is l of t, l of f of t, is equal to 1 over x minus 9. Well, that tells me that interchanging the two arguments tells me that f of t is L of, L inverse of, 1 over s minus 9. Well, L of, L inverse of just 1 over s that's one. But now there's a shift. There's a shift. So how do we handle the shift? What makes this bottom zero is nine? So I get e to the nine t. That's f of s. Well, No, no, no. Like the equal sign says, I'm looking at the far left, but it doesn't say equal there. That's f of t. f of t is that. So I want to know what f of t minus a is, but a is 3. Instead of t, I put t minus 3. So I'll get e to the 9 times t minus 3. So now I know what this is. It's e to the 9 times t minus 3. I just used the formula and information that we've learned in previous sections. Now, let me keep this page because I want that top formula. Suppose you are asked to calculate the following. Suppose you are asked to calculate L inverse of E to the negative pi over 3s times s over s squared plus 16. Well, a is pi over 3. So it's going to be u of t minus pi over 3. You get some credit. And f of s, is, which is the same as the Laplace of f of t. So if you want to remember the formula as e to the and instead of f of s, you can think L of f of t. That is the Laplace inverse of e to the negative as times the plus of f of t is equal to that. Okay. It's s over s squared plus 16. Interchanging those two, you get that f of t is the Laplace inverse of s over s squared plus 16. The 16 is 4 squared. This is a sine and cosine one. Since that has s, I won't write sine. I write cosine of k t. Cosine of 4t. But I don't want f of t. At least not in the end. I don't want f of t. I want f of t minus pi over 3. So instead of t, everything else stays the same. Cosine of 4 of t minus pi over 3. That goes on top here. Cosine of 4 times t take away pi over 3. And there's your inverse problem is done. Try a couple more.
definitely winding down here. Now we're going to look at an alternate method for the second translation theorem. If you have L of G of T, not G of T minus A, times U of T minus A. This is just E to the negative AS times L of not g of t, but g of t plus a. So that's another theorem. So suppose you were asked to calculate the Laplace transform of cosine of t times u of t minus pi. Well, the l is the l, the bracket the bracket. There's the u, there's the t minus a where pi is a, there's the closed bracket, g of t is cosine of u. Okay, so we're ready to write down part of the answer. It's e to the negative a, a is pi, negative pi s, times l of g of t plus pi. G plus A, but A is pi. Okay. So we need to find, so it's going to be E to the negative pi S times this. We need to find out what L of G of T plus pi is. Well, before we can find L or something, we really need to know what that something is. Well, G of T is cosine of T. That is, what's in the brackets for G goes for the angle. So that's in the bracket. So it's cosine of that angle. T plus pi. Now what is cosine of T plus pi? Whichever quadrant you're in. If you're in quadrant 1, the adjacent will be positive. And if you add pi you end up in quadrant 3. So this is t, and that's t plus pi. Here, the adjacent is negative. What do I talk about? Adjacent, plus the cosine of an angle, is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay, when you go 180 degrees, the, the number, the magnitude of each side will not change. But they may go from positive to negative. Now, if you're in quadrant 2, let's draw another one. If you're in quadrant 2, you being theta, or t, let's call it t. If you're in quadrant 2, well then you get this triangle. And that's the hypotenuse, and the adjacent will be negative. Now if you add 180 degrees, you end up here. That's t plus 180. And in this triangle, the adjacent is positive. If you do this in all four quadrants, all that happens is you get the same cosine of t plus pi is just the cosine of t, but with a sign change. You understood that great. If you didn't, look it up. The cosine of t plus pi is negative cosine of t. This is explained very carefully in the trigonometry DVD. The minus can come out. So you have negative the Laplace transform of cosine of 1t. That is k is 1. So it's negative since that starts with an S, I mean a C, I put S on top. 1 over, it's S over S squared plus K squared. 1 squared is 1. So there it is. Negative S over S squared plus 1. I would write that as negative 
e to the negative pi s times s over s squared plus 1. This formula on top made this quite easy. So use that formula as well. Let's try one more problem. Suppose you have that y prime minus y is equal to 1 plus t e to the t and y is 0 is 0. Well actually we've already done that one. Or how about we try this one. Suppose that you would given that L of T take away 1 times U of T take away 1. And you want to, we want to find F of X. That is, we want to evaluate this. We want to know what this is. Well, we know that L of F of T minus A, let's say T minus, well, let's say A, T minus A times U of T minus A, this mess is equal to E to the negative AF times F of A. We know that. Well, A is clearly 1. I hope that's clear. Well, this matches with that where A is 1. That means that this must be equal. That is, F of T minus 1 is equal to T minus 1. So, F of whatever you put in here is what you get back. That is, F of T is just T. Okay. So, what we have is, this is equal to E to the negative. We said our few times A is 1. 1 times F times F of S. But F of S is equal to the Laplace transform of F of T. But F of T is T. Now if you prefer, you can call that V. Well then that's V. So this means F for V is equal to V. Well, V is a dummy variable. You can call V T again. Now, F of T to the 1 is 1 factorial over S to the 1 plus 1. 1 over S squared. So there's my answer. If E to the negative S, over S squared. This match things up nicely. Try one more like that. Suppose you have L of the cosine of 2t times u of t minus pi. Now this doesn't fit the last formula that we have, that we use. But we have this other formula, L of G of T times U of T minus A. This is E to the negative AS times the Laplace of not G, not G of T, but G of T plus A. Okay. 
So this is g of t, and this part equals that part. So a is pi. So I'm ready to write down part of the answer is e to the negative a s times the Laplace of g of t plus a. For this problem, that's how I write down a. So that's what a equals. So now we have to figure out what this is going to equal. What this is going to equal. Well, like we said, g of t is cosine of 2 times t. So whatever you put in there, it gets doubled, and you take the cosine of that value. So g of t plus pi, well first you double, at least you denote that you're doubling what's inside there, and then you take the cosine of that angle. 2 times t plus 2 times pi. The 2 pi is the whole circle. Just one more revolution. If right there is 2t, well, if you add 2 pi, you get right back to the same place. That is, this is just cosine of 2t. It turns out, and g of 2t is equal to g of t. That's called a coincidence. I'm not going to think anything about it. I just thought I'd mention it. So this is equal to e to the negative pi s times the Laplace of cosine of 2t. Well, that's k. So it says e to the negative pi s times, since that starts with a c, at least it doesn't start with an s, put s on the top over s squared plus k squared. 2 squared is 4. And there is your answer. And the only comment I'll say is this equal sign really matches with that. That is, the plus of what's inside those brackets is equal to this. Well, let me say it exactly right. This equal sign matches with the top line. That is, I can get rid of this. Okay. Try one more. Suppose that you are told that f of t is sometimes 2 and sometimes it's negative 2. It's 2 when t is in between 0 and 3 and equals 0. And it's negative 2 if t is greater than or equal to 3. Now, we want to write this using step functions. Well, we want to write this using the unit step function and then find the Laplace transform of t. Sorry, of f of t. Well, one way of doing this is to realize that most of the time, or part of the time, you want to just get 2. And then the other, so there's my 2 that I wrote down. So far, f of t is always 2. Now, you should realize that the negative 2 in the bottom is 2 minus 4. There's the 2. Now sometimes, 
I want to take away 4. But I only want to take away 4 when t is at least 3. That is, sometimes I want to multiply the 4 by the 0. 2 minus 4 zeros will give me 2. And sometimes I want to multiply the 4 by 1. 2 minus 4 gives me the negative 2. So I use the unit step function. U of t minus 3. Now remember, when t is less than 3, this is 0. So I'm getting 2. 2 minus 4 times 0 is 2. Exactly what I want to get. Now, if t is 3 or above, this is 1. And you have 2 take away 4 1's. Well, that's negative 2. So it's working like a charm. Let me just write it down without all the writing there. And there it is. So I want the Laplace of f of t. Now, I could have taken the Laplace in that form. Okay, that is, remember, this is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times f of t dt. But f of t from negative infinity to 0 is 0. So here's negative infinity, here's 0, and here's 3. So in here, it's always 0. Or undefined if you prefer. Between 0 and 3, between 0 and 3, f of t is just 2. And we can integrate this. And then, remember, we have to go from 3 to infinity. So now we integrate from that 0, excuse me, to 3 to infinity. And it's e to the negative st times negative 2, the value of the function dt. But just writing this down took a while. And now we actually have to integrate these two and then evaluate from 0 to 3, 3 to infinity. It's just much, much too long to do that. I think it was quicker just to think of u, sorry, think of f of t using the unit step function. Okay. So now we just take the Laplace of 2 minus 4u of t minus 3. But this is very simple. It's the Laplace of 2. I can even factor out the 2. There are 2 times the Laplace of 1 minus the Laplace of 4 u of t minus 3. The 4 can factor out in front. L of 1 is just 1 over s, minus 4 times. Now, we have a theorem that says L of u of t minus a is nothing more than e to the negative a s over s. Okay. So it's minus 4 times a is 3. So it's e to the negative a s over s. And there it is. In fact, they both have the same denominator. This fraction or term and this term, they both have the same denominator. So it's 2 times 1 minus 4 times e to the negative 3s over 2. And there it is. It ate through this type of a problem. In fact, let's try one more. Is the last one. Suppose that you are told that f of t is sometimes 0 when t is between 0 and 1, and other times it's t squared. And it's t squared when t is at least 1. 
So you want to rewrite this. So you don't want to take the integral of e to the negative st times t squared dt. Now from 0 to 1. Actually, the integral was always 0 to infinity. So I didn't have to talk about from negative infinity to 0 in the last problem. So now, from 0 to 1, this is always 0. So this product will always be 0. And if the function height is always 0, the area under the curve will be 0. So we just go from 1 to infinity. And we can do that. And it wouldn't be that bad. We have to do integration by parts twice. It's best to use the tic-tac-toe method. The interval. So we can use this step function. And you need to think about what it's going to take for this to work. What should the step function be? And if you do lots of these, like every one in your textbook, for example, eventually you'll catch on to the technique. So you're going to have t squared. Now, sometimes you want to multiply the t squared by 0 to give you 0. And sometimes you want to multiply the t squared by 1. Oh, you mean the step function? U of t minus 1. This by definition, just so let's write it down here. U of t minus 1 by definition. Sometimes it's 0, sometimes it's 1. It's 0 if t is in between 0 and that number. That number being a number that comes after the minus sign. And it's 1 when t is bigger than 1. But that's what we want. We want t squared times 1, which is t squared, when t is bigger than 1. Okay, so that's the function. Now, since this is t minus 1, and this is just t, we're going to use this formula. This one. Yeah, this formula. The one that says that L of g of t times u of t minus a. The Laplace transform of that is nothing more than e to the negative a s times l of g of t plus a. Okay. So we take the Laplace transform of both sides. t squared times u of t minus 1. I hope it's clear that g of t is t squared and a over here is the number 1. Okay, so we get back this piece e to the negative 1s, the so 1s is just x, times the Laplace transform of g of t plus 1. Well, if that's g of t, what, what does g do to what's in here? It squares it. It squares it. So I'm not going to discriminate. g of this is that squared. Now, you could play games transforming this and just finding L or T squared, I think it'll just be easiest to foil it out. You can get T squared plus 2T plus 1. So E to the negative S times the Laplace of T squared plus I'll factor out the 2 plus 2 times the Laplace of T plus 
the Laplace of 1. So it's e to, let me write it down here. So it's e to the negative as. The Laplace of t squared is s cubed with a 2 on top, 2 factorial, plus 2 times the Laplace of t to the 1 is 1 factorial over s squared, plus the Laplace of 1 is just 1 over s, and there is your answer. It's very helpful to be able to go from this piecewise function to that function. They're equal. I want to rewrite the piecewise function using this unit step function. This completes the section on translation forms.